Dude, I'm all pink everything today. Dude, showing your uh, true colors. Shout out my guy, Pickleball Gangsta Fred. He's kind of sick. He showed up in my house. <laughs> I'll tell you, I will wear free stuff. I like free stuff. You got that monthly subscription down. I do. It's like, yeah, it's like Fabletics. It shows up. All right, welcome back, everybody, to another episode of King of the Court. We are your host. I am Tyler, and this is... Jimmy Miller. Jimmy Miller. I like your colors today, Jimmy. I know. I'm... Bringing out the masculinity. Yeah, listen, but I love pink. You love pink. You have some odd, odd colors. Well, this looks good, bro. This is, like I said, pickleball gangsta. I got roasted last time with my striped shirt. Well, bro, you did look like you just got out of prison. Like, Pe- people like it. They, you look like you're headed to Alcatraz after the show. <laughs> so. It looked pretty good, though. I like it. Uh, anyways, thank you for tuning in. Hopefully, you guys have had a good week. Um, Last week, we kind of broke some news that the MLP PPA merger went through, and we have news to report that it has blown up. Just, just yeah, kidding. Just kidding. Yeah. Uh, that was a joke. Um, all right, moving forward, uh, we're going to do a quick uh, MLP PPA recap, and then I think that will kind of be in our rear view mirror. Yeah, because um, there, there are a, some small things that like I guess we found out. Yeah. Um, some details that are, I think are really interesting that people would want to hear. So yep. for those that don't know, they've come to, they come to agreement. I think everybody that watches the show probably knows this. So everything looks good on that end. Everything is signed, sealed, and delivered. But there's some But wait, Jimmy. Our title sponsor. Oh, yeah. Let's get to that. The Pickler. That's way more important. <laughs> the Pickler. You guys love hearing about our sponsors. You the guys Pickler. might not like it, but without them... We wouldn't be able to produce these shows. We love so, the Pickler. Uh, go check them out. The Pickler is the title sponsor of this show. Yes. Um, they are building pickleball facilities all around the world. They have their first, well, not their first one, but their first one in a while opening uh, in Naperville, Chicago yeah. area. Yeah. So go check it out. I think it's March 20th. 23rd, I believe. 23rd. Go yeah. to the grand opening. Go it, support. If you're in that area, if you're close, go support. We, we got to stop saying this because we're getting in trouble with the Pickler people, but we may or may not be out to that one. We're trying to go out to that one. So yeah, we will let you guys it. know next episode if we are able to make it out to that one or not. Regardless, uh, go out there, check it out. It's going, going to be awesome. Um, Pickler, they build incredible franchise facilities all around the country. Very high end. Dude, they just hosted the Duper Collegiate Regionals. Yeah, they had Stanford there. Yeah, Stanford was there. There were schools from all over the country. It was pretty impressive. Yeah. There was some solid pickleball too. Yeah. So go check them out and tell them that uh, the guys from KOTC sent you. Um, You could be a business owner in pickleball if you wanted to. Yeah. I actually had a pro player reach out to me wanting me to connect them with the pickler. Yeah, there's, they do a lot of stuff with different pros. Kyle yeah. Yates is working with them. I'm working yeah. with them. There's a lot of other pros yeah. in different areas. And they were interested in, in taking some of this newfound money now that they're getting paid yeah. and investing in their own pickler franchise. There so. you go. Um, and our next sponsor is Pickleball Central. They yeah. are a pickleball retailer. Yeah. They sell pretty much every single paddle brand, pickleball brand that you could imagine. Um, use code KOTC. It is the best code yeah. out there. So good that we cannot say what the we were actually is. told that there is not a bigger discount. Yes, um, that discount KOTC will apply to most items. Yeah, um, and also if you use our code KOTC, you're going to receive two free balls. Yep, with a paddle purchase. With a paddle purchase, there are some. Exclu- some restrictions. Some I don't think Yola is honoring that deal, but yeah. pretty much everybody else. Everybody of them. else, and they're not like. You know, the cheap, they're not just thrown into wiffle balls. They're thrown in. Do you think Valer is honoring that deal? I hope so. Listen, Valer, okay, I you need to, on our last episode, I said some things about Valer based off of my experience. Do you regret that? No, I don't, I now have, have zero regrets. But I did get, some people came at me hard. Valer they, has They some, reached out to you personally? Yes. Valer has some big fans. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's what I will say. So, so I need to give Valer another shot <laughs> because- they, they're the people that use Valer are, they are hardcore. They clearly love the paddle. Do they speak Italian? I don't know, but Valer, I mean, probably not anymore. And maybe at one point, <laughs> but Valer did reach out to me. So I'm willing to give Valer another shot. <laughs> I do need an Andiamo button though. In order for me to give him another shot, I need an Andiamo button. Um, and yeah, I listen, I am the first to admit when I'm wrong. So let's see what happens 
you know, when I tried new Valera paddle, but their fans, the people that, I mean, they were pissed. Yeah. I, I can't even tell you. I was getting DMs <laughs> left and right. Unless it's just the, the owner of Valera and he has like 50 burners. <laughs> that could be possible too, but they were coming at me hard. So I'm sorry. That's my experience, but I can't wait to try it. And then I'll report back. Okay. All right. Sorry. I cut you off. Uh, no. Reporting with the well, MLB. Use code KOTC and you can buy a Valera on Pickleball Central. There you go. Uh, real quick, MLP PPA merger that was yeah. pretty much buttoned up last week. However, yeah, so, there's a few loose ends. Yeah, so there's some loose ends. So it's kind of weird. So it's done. Um, the couple things we're hearing is that they're going to try and do the draft in North Carolina, which is, uh, I believe, the 30th of March through April 7th. Yes, and it's supposed to be at a pretty sweet venue. Yeah, yeah. So they want to do it at a sweet venue. There may or may not be somebody who is very high up in the PPA that has the a, hockey team, an arena, arena <laughs> he owns an arena. So <laughs> could be cool. Uh, the second thing is, is the target date. We were told tentatively again, this is all fluid hype guys. Let's not go ahead and clip this. Okay. <laughs> is Atlanta. Yeah. Which is March or May 11th to 17th, I believe. Yeah. And real quick, there's a lot of, we have a lot of, um, fans out there we have a lot of fans you guys are incredible yeah. but there's also a couple of haters or trolls if you want to call them yeah. that and we had this one in our previous episode not the emergency one but our previous episode where we talked about the mlp pp merger and he said you guys are just a bunch of gossip you guys are rumors you guys have never produced anything of factual information and i'm here to say we were right and then b yes. um i promise you the amount of knowledge and rumors and factual information that he receives and also myself, he is a president of an MLP team. He's talking to owners. We're talking to employees. We're talking to sponsored pro players. We have a lot of information going on, going around. If our information is not correct, it's not because we are making it up. It's because the information that we were told was probably not accurate. Well, yeah, and it changes. The thing is, is and this, it changes. This it's all fluid. changes. Yeah. That's the other thing that... People need to understand. and But I promise me. you the accuracy of this show of what he or I are saying is going to be far superior than that of other people. Yeah. I mean, when we, when we get the information, we try to relay it to you guys the best that we can because that's what the show has kind of been based on. We're, we're going to always be honest. And if we find something out, like we're, we're not going to hold it back. We've always wanted to kind of pump Unless it Unless we're told to hold it back. Yeah. I mean, there's certain things that, yeah. But there's certain things that if we don't hold back, it'll tell you who it came from and yeah. get certain people in trouble. And we don't ever want that. But when we find stuff out, we try to pump it out as quick as we can because the fans want to know. Right. And this makes pick. That's what makes pickleball so great is the players are very, they're very uh, accessible still at this point. Yeah. And we're trying to get transparency. You know, like you guys don't know the inner workings of major league baseball negotiations. You don't know the inner workings of the NBA and, and, NBA Players Association negotiations, and we kind of have been able to bring you inside the PPA MLP the best that we can. Okay, sorry about that so, tangent. Anyways, um, real quick, follow up with your uh, with the yeah MLP yeah. So stuff. so if they so we'll say draft North Carolina first event ideally would be Atlanta, which is about seventy five days out. They still have to structure things a little bit. Like there's some talk whether they're going to stick with Challenger and Premier. Are they going to go all just one league, one big league? Um, and then Challenger originally was six players, mm -hmm. but we have been told that there's been 30 players, mm -hmm. 28, that have been bought out. And what that means is they were given around 75% of one year's salary. Mm -hmm. And what, so they're essentially bought out. So what that does is these players get paid up front. So they get a big, large chunk of money, right? So if you say you're a hundred, most of these players, I would imagine, I don't have this information, but I would imagine their contracts were anywhere from 40 to 80,000 around yeah. there. Yeah. And so 75% of that amount is what they would have been purchased out. Yeah. For. So, but we're just going to use whole numbers because whole numbers are easy. So if you go a hundred thousand, they're given $75,000. What that does is these players take a $75,000 check today. They walk away. And then moving forward, PPA, MLP, we'll call, we're going to call it NUCO, saves, in essence, you know, if it's a three-year $100,000 deal, that's three hundred, dollars So they're saving $225,000 mm -hmm. throughout the course. So we were told that they're actually able to shave 
a really significant amount of money off of yeah. several million dollars off of this by buying players out. Yeah. They're also able to cut things down from like 21 million to 10 million by buyouts and um, players renegotiations with players, things like that. So, so it's pretty significant cut that they were able to do. Now, with that being said, those players that were bought out, mm-hmm. our understanding is they can still play MLP. Yes. However, and they can still win money for the midseason tournament, and they can still win money for the finals. Mm-hmm. But other than that, there's not any money that they will get paid for playing MLP. Mm-hmm. So the question is, is will they play? <clears throat> like if you're if you're a player who was bought out, mm-hmm. you just got a seventy five thousand dollar check. And you're drafted by an MLP team. Mm-hmm. Do you go play MLP when you know that you're not getting paid anything other than the midseason and the postseason? Or do you go just play APPs and win prize money? I think some of them will because yeah. they enjoy it yeah. and it's something to do. And yeah. it also helps with their brand and, and their sponsors, everything and like, like that. that. I yeah. think some of them will, but I don't think every single one of them will. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that. So that'll be interesting to see what happens. I think that that will end up knocking. On the list that we were sent of the players that were bought out, there was one that was a premier player. Right there. Uh, Right there. Oh, yes. One premier player. Yeah, one premier. So pretty much everybody else was either challenger or not even challenger. Which wouldn't surprise you. The premier player is essentially retired anyways. Yeah. So you guys can guess who that is. And their team was atrocious. So I would never want to play MLP again. (laughs) If I had to play on that team. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that makes sense. The, se- the second thing is, also, I don't know if you know this, but that player only signed a two-year deal. I didn't know that, yeah. Yeah, instead of the tr- three that everyone else. The second thing is, is there is a list of players mm-hmm. who still refused cuts. And that play- that list is around 10 or so, 12? Oh, uh, it's probably like 15. 15 players. Yeah, it's probably 15 or so. So these players... Refuse to take any sort of cuts. So they're still on their very first initial. Very first contract. And so MLP, PPA, NUCO has said, okay, that's fine. You cannot play PPAs because you refuse cuts. Now, are all these players that refuse cuts all signed MLP players and none of them are PPA players? Looking at it right now, yes. Yes. So they basically said you cannot play PPAs. You you can play PPAs, but you have to pay your own entry, your own registration fees, mm-hmm. your own entry fees, your travel, your travel, yeah. and then you get essentially fifty percent. Or you you can win prize money at what any other non signed player would win, mm-hmm. but the contract state that eighty percent of that prize money goes to MLP. So I think they can win of up to fifty percent of the at risk prize money. Yeah, and then out of that fifty percent. 80% would go, go back to yeah. MLP. So essentially, I don't think you're going to see these players playing PPAs because it doesn't make sense for them. They might play in a couple, but it won't yeah. be nearly. It, w- it won't be a lot. Yeah. Um, so there is one player. Mm-hmm. Can we say who it is? I don't know. Who are you going to say? I mean, the biggest name. Sure. So there is one player that we were told that didn't take a buyout. Mm-hmm. He's the biggest name, I would say. Mm-hmm. And it's Riley Newman. Yeah. And Riley Newman did not take a buyout. Riley has essentially agreed to go do clinics. Mm-hmm. He's going to do... Because the amount that he signed for for him or for pretty much anybody is life-changing it, money. It's life-changing money. And so for him, he's like, look, if I have to go do clinics for 200 days a year mm-hmm. and I make this type of money, right, then I will, I'll go do that. I'll have my 165 days off and I'll play MLPs. Mm-hmm. So... Don't be surprised if we no no longer see Riley Newman on the PPA tour. How does Jim Kloss feel about that? I think Jim probably is going to cry himself to sleep, but I also think Jim advised him to do this. Do you think he did? 100% he did. Yeah. Here, here's, here's the question. If you could make, again, just using whole numbers, mm-hmm. if you could make a million dollars a year for three years, mm-hmm. okay? So three million. Three million dollars. You work 200 days a year. You play nine MLP events. Right, so you probably have fifty days of MLP actual playing, mm-hmm. and then you have one hundred and fifty days of clinics, mm-hmm. right? Wherever they may be, mm-hmm. and then you're off for one hundred and sixty-five days. Yeah, or you can make five hundred thousand. Yeah, a year for three years, so one and a half million, which is still great money. Mm-hmm. And then you have to go. You go grind for twenty-five events on the PPA tour. Mm-hmm. You go grind for six to nine MLP events. Right. Yeah, and. 
you probably have fewer days off, I mm-hmm. would imagine. But you are com- competing. Mm-hmm. What What's your, I mean, I, I can't, it's hard to knock him for that. For sure. Yeah. And uh, obviously we don't know the exact numbers. Those are, but yeah. yeah. Did you get sent that funny text message? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know you got it. So there, there's basically a text message that says that I'll go feed balls to Susan in Albuquerque with my Rolex on. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. The, the, the only thing I'll say is, listen, $3 million or whatever that amount is, that's a ton of money. But you also have to include taxes. That's going to be 50% off. Sure, but there's taxes at 500000 Yeah, too. but they're going to be a lot less. And you can yeah. play the taxes a okay, lot better than I that. I would rather have. Yeah. That's but, a good problem I mean, to have. moving forward, I mean, does your mindset just shift? Do you just stop caring about winning or do you think, I mean, his intensity will still be there? No. I mean, I think he's only like if have, he loses or anything like that. Is that fine? I think my personal opinion is that Riley knows he's not going to be a top five player in three years. Mm-hmm. So he needs to get paid now. You know, he's single. He's a single dude, mm-hmm. right? He has, you know, he doesn't have like kids. He doesn't have a spouse. I, I don't, I don't even think he has a girlfriend mm-hmm. based off of the things that dude does in the club. So I don't think he has a girlfriend. Um, so yeah, for him, it's it's an easy choice. It's an easy choice for him to take the money and he's yeah. go travel around and do clinics. So I heard. Now the question is, do his sponsors kick back? Yeah. Does Pro XR kick back saying yeah. that Riley's not on the tour? Yeah. You know, because do you want to pay Riley Newman whatever it is when he's only playing eight events a year? Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yeah, I think. They're going to have him do his 200 days. Oh, I know. And he's going to have a home club yeah. where he teaches out of. Yeah. Um, I heard that schedule is going to be like Tuesday through Thursday, teaching quite a bit of hours each day. Yeah. And then, so. And that and that's not just right, though. There's, there's like we said, there's 15 players. Exactly. But with some of those other players, some of yeah. them are personalities. And so they yeah. could be at tournaments. I think they've negotiated with some of the, the tours to – uh, maybe commentate and those would count as some of the days or if they were capturing social media or yeah. interviewing players or something like that. So um, I think for some of the players, it might be case by case, but um, they might be able to knock out some of their days by doing different things. Yeah. I mean, if, if Nuco is smart, if this new merge entity is smart, they wouldn't just throw these guys in clinics. They yeah. would put them to work doing other things. Whatever like, is most valuable to them. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, Riley Newman, is he valuable doing clinics? Sure. I actually think I heard they, him and his sister were good instructors. Like they I'm did sure, a bunch of clinics. That's what I'm saying. I'm sure the they're great, but I also think that you could take Riley and you could have him do other things, right? Mm-hmm. He's still a big personality. Yeah. Not Instagram videos, though. They are cringy. They are awful. He wasn't even wearing shoes when he picked his paddle sponsor. He was sitting in the backyard and he tried to do that little hat thing where like they do for college players. Oh, we, we should have done that with the MLP PPA. Yeah. Say, which one, which one are you going to choose? Yeah. <laughs> but he wasn't even wearing shoes. That was weird to me. Like yeah. at least bro, like let's, it's the details. Okay. Anything else with MLP? So, no, so exciting. yeah, so it's exciting. Um, I did hear a rumor though that there, that some owners still want ML first MLP to be Miami. Mm-hmm. When is that? Um, let me look at the dates, but there, it's the same as F one. It's the same weekend as F one. Huh? I think I think that's just too soon. May second. Gotcha. So it's the week, essentially the week before. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. I don't know. I think just because I think they're doing like big F one events and they're doing, mm-hmm. you know, a bunch. So of everything will be crazy expensive. To- yeah. Yeah. Those guys are like, yeah. yeah, let's do it. We can afford it. Yeah. All right. Anything else? No, I think that's it. So, hey, finally, MLP PPA, we can start playing pickleball again. Yeah, exciting. Yeah. yeah. There was so much up up in the air, and finally, it's good to see it uh, resolved somewhat. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Uh, our next segment is brought to you by Vulcan Pickleball. We love Vulcan. They make the V-Pro Flight. They V-Pro. are the title sponsor or the ball sponsor of the PPA Tour. Yes, if you want to play with the official ball of the PPA Tour, there is only one place to get it. Actually, there's two. <laughs> VulcanSportingGoods.com. Use code KOTC. They're also available on Pickleball Central. They are. They've been sold out for quite some time. Yes. And I've heard they're getting a new shipment in like one to two weeks. New shipments coming in. Yeah. So get your official ball of the PPA Tour. Vulcan, check it out. We love Vulcan. Also, 
new paddle. Vulcan? Yeah. Yeah, it's They're been out April, well. April 1st is okay. when I was, the email that I received said that they would. So it technically uh, is available online yeah. on Vulcan's website, but through retailers and distributors, it's not available yet. Yes, the official launch is April 1st. Cool. So, it's an awesome paddle. I love it. Yeah. So Lots the, of power. So there's two variants. There's mine. Yeah. And then there's Jay's, Jay's, which they're both very similar. The minor difference is mine is going to have a little bit more power. Jay's is going to have a little bit more control. Yeah. So, so this, if you're needing that power, like yeah. me, get my paddle. If you the, feel strong, get Jay's. The V1100 and V1200, they're yep. thermoformed with raw carbon fiber surfaces. Yep. Yeah, Jay's is more raw carbon fiber face, more control. And Tyler, raw car- T800 raw carbon fiber face, yep. more pop. Also, Jay's grip just is slightly longer. Slightly longer as well, yep. Yeah, interesting. So check them out, Vulcan. Okay, we love paddles. All right, moving on. So this upcoming week, we have a fun tournament, Minnesota, the PPA Minnesota Open. Indoor championships. Indoor at Lifetime. Yeah. They have maybe... I'm going to be killed for this. I don't know. 30, 30 indoor courts, pickleball yeah. courts. Yeah. Um, there's only maybe 10 permanent and then the rest are temporary. Do they have outdoor courts there? Not to my knowledge. Okay. I don't think many do in Minnesota just cause I the hear weather. the weather is yeah. a bit of a, yeah. I was just curious if they had like, you know, for the summer because somebody said that Minnesota is like, like uh warm right now. Gotcha. It's like a weird, the last two years were, insane with weather weather like yeah. weather storm snow snowed in everything it looks like, like that. this weekend's about 40 and sunny okay which is cold but at least it's not snow all right let's let's go through the draws all yeah, right right yeah. now we I actually got... have not seen the draws, so this will be good uh, we'll look it up together all right here we go we're going to start with men's singles so this field is is very um it's a limited field okay there we're missing a lot of players yep so it's ben just, johns won't be here yeah um, no Annalee. Annalee won't be there. Won't be there. Tyson will not be there. Okay. Um, the who else? Who else is not there? Oh, J Dub, Dylan, uh, James Ignatowicz is injured. James Ignatowicz pulled out because he's hurt. Yeah. So yeah. So it's a very limited field. Okay. All right. So uh, we have our number one seed is Federico Stekstrud. Who who's been the number one singles player this year so far? I would say pretty clear. I mean, that. Fed's been to every final, so yeah. you'd have to say yeah. Him. He's you got to say he's number one. Yep. This this point yeah okay yeah. uh let's go through this somewhat quick uh we have fed up here um oh fed might play your boy todd oh yeah he could very possible kwong is in it um he'll have to play onik Lawani. so so there's three boys up in minnesota there's mo alhuni mm-hmm. moda alhuni and onik lahani are all minnesota locals mm-hmm. and they're all beasts at singles yep so and they get to play kind of in their home yeah. Court. So we'll see if any of those three can make a run. So those courts, though, mm-hmm. there's been some, I don't want to use the word complaints, but it, it takes some getting used to mm-hmm. because they're like kind of squishy. Is that yes. fo- they're like foam or yeah, something? Yeah, they're they're more squishy. Yeah. So yeah. what they do is, what, what I was told is like they're softer mm-hmm. for the older people that play yeah. at Lifetime. Because yeah. they were they're, built for tennis. They're built for tennis. Yeah. And so it's easier on the older demographics knees and things like that Mm -hmm. and so for you guys it takes some getting used to like the balls may not come up like they normally do yeah things like that yeah so it'll be interesting to see how the v pro flight plays on those courts uh but yeah you might you might be hearing of some complaints yeah okay okay um kwong so yeah so kwong is actually he would play phonic well, Onik Lohani. Onik Lohani. So that's going to be tough for Kwong to get through that. And then he would play Fed in the quarters. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, Pablo is coming in at the four seed. Yeah. Yep. So um, that's interesting. That shows how, I mean, Pablo is a good singles player, but that shows I think how. PPA just released their, sing- well, all the rankings. Yeah. And I think he was number nine yeah. on that list. Yeah. So yeah. Connor Garnett's the two. Yep. Jack Sock, he'll play J. Second round. Okay. Dude, that's going to be tough. And then he'll play Connor Garnett, whoever wins that match. Because Jay's been playing really well in singles. Mm-hmm. Yes, very well. Yeah. And then we have uh, Colin Schick and Hayden Patrick Quinn could mm-hmm. end up playing in the second round. Yep. So, yeah. I mean, well, I, Casey Campbell. So he'll play into Hayden. Oh, Casey Campbell. Yeah. 
who we're trying to get on the pod. Yeah, we should have an interview with him yeah. this so week. So Cason Campbell's playing singles. Yeah. We'll see if he can kind of keep the magic going from uh, from Mesa. Yep. So, yeah, I really like – I mean, my predictions, I have no idea how they did last time. But I, it's really hard to bet against Fed right now. Mm-hmm. Now, I think those indoor courts will play a little bit of a role. And this is the traditional tournament, so it's all in one day minus yeah. the finals. Yep, exactly. Which actually means that Fed's buy helps him a little bit. Um, but I like Fed and Onik Lahani okay. in the quarters. So you think Onik beats I think Kwong? he beats Kwong. Okay. Yeah. And then, which I think Kwong's a great singles player. I just think Onik is at home. And then I really like... Um, I actually think Jay's going to, I don't know. I, actually, I'm going to say Jack Sock and Connor Garnett. Okay. And I think Connor Garnett gets him this time. Okay. You know, I think Connor's, Connor's do. Christian Alshon's in there as well. Yeah. And then Alshon is probably going to end up playing. Sh- he Shiver, looks like Casey he's got Campbell. a pretty favorable draw. Yeah. Christian Alshon. Yeah. So we may see Alshon. So let's go, let's go fed. Okay. And then let's see the bottom of that draw. Julian I mean, that's Arnold. it. It's well, I mean, the bottom of the oh. of the top half. Let's see. We have Julian Arnold. No, he's on top half. That's what I'm saying. The bottom oh. of the top half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so Julian, honestly, if Julian or Pablo really should get to the semis. They have pretty favorable, right? And unless you're you're missing me. Oh, I didn't I didn't know you were playing. I I'm thought you're still hurt. No. I'm better. I'm like ninety percent. Oh. Oh, Frick. Well in that case, that changes everything, <laughs> Tyler. Come that, on. That changes everything. Roasting me. To be honest, that part of the draw is pretty favorable. Gabe is tough. Gabe Joseph yeah, is of tough. Course. Julian is, I mean, depends on which Julian shows up. When Gabe wears socks, he's really good. <laughs> um, yeah, and then obviously Julian's tough, but I'm just saying in terms of there's no Fed, there's yeah. no Connor Garnett, there's no Tyson, there's no do you know what my strategy now moving forward for singles is? What's that? Hit the ball as hard as I can. Yeah. Like absolutely as hard as I can. Yeah. Why not? That's what Jack Sock does. Yeah. Yeah. But you got to. I well, used to think angles and deep and short and wide. Just, just rip, rip it. Rip it. Yeah. Rip it. That's a good, that's a good strategy. Yeah. You win or you lose. Yeah. That's okay. true. You might as well go out. So let's say that. I'm going to say we're going to go Christian Alshon versus Connor Garnett. Okay. Okay. So you're saying Connor's beating Jack Sock. I think Connor's going to beat Jack Sock. I think he's due to beat Jack. And then on the top half, I'm going to say Fed. Fed, obviously. I think Fed has a pretty favorable. The only thing I'll say is Kwong, to my knowledge, he's played Fed two times. The first time Kwong got rolled. Yeah. I think he scored one or three points or something. Yeah. The second time, Kwong got beat pretty bad, but yeah. he scored quite a bit more points. And now, I'm legit writing third time's a charm. Time. I'm legit writing these down this time because S- somebody will clip it. Okay, here we go. So we're going to go semis, first men's singles. Okay. Okay, we're going to go fed. And that bottom half of that draw, I'm going to say Gabe Joseph. Okay. Okay, that's a little bit of a risk there. And then I'm going to go CG okay. and Alshon. Okay. Right? They, they're not. Yeah, they're that's not right. Sides, that's right. right. Okay. Yep. okay. And then I think that uh, I think Fed wins it. Okay. All right. Moving on. Women's singles. So this is interesting because is Leia the one seed or is Mary Brasha? Catherine. Oh, is Catherine playing singles? She okay. Is. She's not playing mixed or women's though. Yeah, last as of last week, she did not have a partner. Yeah. I don't know if she does. We'll find out in yeah. ten minutes. Okay, so women's singles. Okay, um, she'll end up playing Salome in the semis. Y- y- yeah, yeah, semis. Yeah, semis. Who beat her? Yep. Yeah. So that and the, I'm telling you, these indoor courts are going to play a factor. Yeah. So it looks like Elise Jones is playing singles. Oh, Leia will play Paris second round in the Let's round of Leia, 16. Leia smashed Paris when they played. Paris looked like a shell of her former self, unfortunately. Her former self was good. I know. That's why I said she looked like a shell of her former self. She didn't oh. look the same. I don't know what's going on because Paris used to be really, really good. And then Lena. Lena's the three? Caitlin Christensen, or Christian, she's coming in at 12. Yeah, that could be. I mean, Caitlin could be. She'll beat Lena. Um, your partner, by the way, in mixed, right? Yep. Yep. 
So, I mean, I think this one's really easy. Honestly, I, I don't see any <laughs> way that it's not Catherine and Leia in the finals. Okay. I, I just don't see any possible way. All right. Mixed so, doubles now. Yeah. And I'm going to say that Leia wins it, gets her first title of the year. Okay. Okay. Thomas Wilson and Vivian David coming in as the one seed. Crazy. I mean, they've been in the finals, what, two straight, three straight, turn, two straight tournaments? Mm -hmm. Three straight. Yeah. So, I mean, the, two because Megan and Tyson, yeah. So they they deserve, I mean, they deserve the one seed without, I mean, you don't have Anna Bright and James Ignatowicz. You don't have, um, obviously, Ben and Annalie, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I think that they're, they're a worthy one seed right now. Okay. But I think that also there's a lot of people that are thinking this is my chance. Mm -hmm. This field is wide open. So Zane is playing with Coop. And yeah. And they are a long, long time partnership. Yeah. Yeah. So Zane and Coop, solid. But um, they'll play Callie and Jay. Yeah. So Callie and Jay had a rough performance in Mesa because Jack Sock just kind of rolled through them. Mm -hmm. We'll see if they can kind of bounce back and figure it out. Uh, Elise and Connor Garnett, Lauren and Julian. So Colin Johns and Anna Bright. Yeah. So Anna Bright goes and picks up Colin Johns because I think she really wanted to play the left this weekend. Uh -huh. so, so I did not have a partner as of about a week ago for mixed doubles, maybe two waited. weeks ago. You should have held out. Sometimes, sometimes it works out. Would Anna would chose you or Colin though. I mean, we finished with a third in our last PPA tournament that we did. So, yeah, so maybe, I don't know. Maybe you could have talked to him. Do it. James owes you a favor. Rafa and Paris Todd. Rafa Hewitt and Paris Todd. Yeah. So I think that that was that. I mean, that's an interesting one. I think that that's a good pickup for Rafa. Mm -hmm. Leia and Hayden, their first tournament together. Okay. I like that matchup. Yeah. I, I really do. I like that partnership. I think that Hayden's hands are so fast that Leia can kind of just sit and do her thing. Yeah. She can speed balls up. She can, she can hit that cross court forehand roll and speed balls up and Hayden will freaking counter. Yeah. I think his hands are faster than Andre's and I think that's going to bode well for them. Tyra and Christian Alshon. Yeah. So they're back together. I mean, that's a good mixed team. They've mm -hmm. had really good success. They'll they've, play fed and Rachel. In yeah. Their second so round. Man, fed and Rachel have not been it this year. How many have they played? Two or three, two or three. Yeah. yeah. And I've, I don't think they've even made it out of the court. Okay. Um, who do you have in the top three? So, well, wait, and ja are Jack Sock and Catherine playing? Yeah. Uh, if we win a, if, me and I'm playing with Lena. Yeah. If we win our first round, we'll play into them. Are they what seed are they? Three. They're the three. Okay. Wait, hold on. Yes. Yeah, they're the three. Okay. So I'm going to say that this is so the bottom of that bracket, I'm going to say Tyra and Christian come through. Okay. Okay. They'd have to beat Jack and Catherine. And they'd have to beat Jack and Catherine. Yeah. Uh -huh. I think that they can do that. Assuming. Think, assuming that you don't beat them. Yeah. You could. You we could. We will beat them. Yes, you very much could. And then I just think Christian's such a good mix player. Mm -hmm. And then I actually really like Leia and Hayden to go deep. And I actually like their their draw. Okay. Um, and then Thomas and Viv, I mean, looking at it, who beats them? Uh, Coop, maybe? Yeah. I'm going to say Thomas and Viv. Okay, so give us your top three. Okay, so Thomas and Viv go to the go to the semis on that side of the bracket. Wait, wait, I lost it. You don't have it memorized? No. Okay. And then the other side, scroll down right there. And then we're gonna say I'm gonna say Leia and Hayden versus Christian and Tyra. Okay. And I'm gonna say, man, that's taking some risks. And I'm gonna say, I don't know. Who wins that? You guys decide. Okay. All right. Moving on uh, to women's doubles. But first and foremost, we want to give a, another shout out to a sponsor of King of the Court podcast, C&D Pickleball Nets. Yes. Jimmy, tell us about C&D Pickleball Nets. are the best pickleball nets out there. They're making a custom net for an MLP owner. Okay. And... It is going to be sick. They will make custom colors. They sent me their color scheme. Bro, the colors are out of control. Mm -hmm. Any color you want. Yeah. They'll match anything. They put logos on it. They strip down the poles and paint them for you. They don't have any, they don't use like plastic parts. They give you the warranties out of How control. How about the wheels? Dude, the wheels are not these piece of crap. I, I know <laughs> that I like harp on these wheels, but it's just weird to pay two, three, four, whatever your thousand dollars for a net. Yeah. And it shows up to your house. 
and it's got freaking Lego wheels on it. <laughs> I love Lego wheels. Like, I mean, it's it's just wild to me. So yeah. C and D, they spare no expense. They don't have bolts. They actually everything is welded. Mm-hmm. It's high, high quality. I mean, these are the official nets of APP. These are the nets that MLP, are used at MLP. MLP actually uses these nets. They actually use these nets because they know how good they are without a sponsorship. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that, but without a sponsorship, that's how sick these nets are. Yeah. So check them out. CND nets, the best pickleball nets.com. Use code KOTC. All these facilities that are being built right now, everybody's building a facility these days, it mm-hmm. seems like. None of them are as good as the pickler. But reach out to C&D. See if you can get bulk nets from them. Why yeah. wouldn't you buy the best? If you want to have the best facility, you need the best nets. Yeah. Yeah. And we've seen a lot of facilities ordering them and using yeah. them at their place. And they look good. They look uniform. They don't look cheap. They don't look. Um, they just look heavy duty, quality. Yeah. yeah. They're great. So check them out. C&D Pickleball Nets. No. I know. I'm just saying CD oh, Pickleball okay. Nets. The best pickleball nets.com. I think it's just best pickleball best nets. Best pickleball nets? Not I think it's best. just best pickleball okay. nets. It'll be on the screen. <laughs> Click the button. Okay. It's there. Troy, Tyler, Jameson, all great dudes. So check it out. Okay. Moving on to women's pro doubles. All right. Okay. We have Leia and Lena are playing together. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. Uh, we have some Utah people. Ella Boydston. And Maddie, we have oh. Rachel Summers and Caitlin Christian, um, Alex Walker, Angie Walker, oh, Walker's Paige good. Miles, Alice and Phillips. Okay, so Dude, it looks is, like a little bit of a smaller draw. This is this is like old women doubles. Yeah, thing. do I'm you having... remember back in the day? Let's talk about this. Real quick. Do you remember when? I won't mention any names, but we know some people. That got bite into the finals of yes, every tournament. Yes, they would like post. <laughs> they would like post that like they finished fifth at a pro tournament, or they finished third, or most of the time it was around fifth. Yeah, and we would go look, and they went like one and two. Yeah, and they'd finish fifth because there's eight people in the draw. Yeah, like these women. Hey, finishing fifth is finishing fifth. Yeah, I mean they would literally one and two got you got yep. you on the podium. Yeah. It was wild. And that's how the women's doubles draws used to be now. Yeah. They're obviously growing, but this reminds me of those draws. Yes, this is very. Um, so Catherine's not playing. Okay. Anna Lee's not playing. Anna not playing. Mm-hmm. Is, who's Anna playing with? Uh, let's see. She with Rachel? Rachel. Okay, so that, that team should be pretty good. Mm-hmm. Who's our one seed? Lucy and Kelly. So Lucy and Kelly and. Gosh, and then Anna. And Lauren Rachel. and Elise. Lauren and Elise. They match up better against Lucy and Kelly versus Anna and Rachel, I would think. I think so, too. I think, though, that Coop and Pisnik are going to come out of that. Tyra and Paris, this is their second tournament, right? Yeah. Yeah. That one should be okay. And then Lacey Schneeman and Vivian David isn't a bad team either. Yeah. So they'll play um, Tyra and Paris their <laughs> second round. Here's the good news everybody that complains about seeing the same finals over and over and over again. You're getting you're getting a new final for Minnesota. There you go. So I'm gonna say that Lucy and Callie make the semis up there. Okay. And then I'm gonna go with uh Coop and Pisnik, play them in the semis. Okay. Okay. And then on the bottom half, I'm gonna go Anna and Rachel. And I'm gonna go Lacey and Viv. Okay. Uh who who do you have winning at top two? Um and Kawamoto's aren't playing in it either. Isn't this close to their home? Yeah, I, mean, I think they're Midwesterners. Yeah. I'm going to say that... Uh, frick, why not? I'm going to say Pisnik and Coop make the finals. Love it. And they play Lacey and Viv in the finals. Okay? <laughs> Love it. And Gutsy freaking move. Tina Pisnik, the black bear for life, wins her first PPA gold. Okay. Okay? All right, moving on to watch last. Them, watch them lose first round now. Men's pro doubles. Okay. All right. So this one is starts in the round of sixty four. Yeah. All right. This uh, is a big. This is a, actually a big field, considering the people that are out of it. So, Colin Johns is playing with Matt Wright because yeah. James Ignatowicz got injured. Yeah. Was Colin not going? He to was play not this? playing at all. Okay. And Matt basically made a call. Gotcha. And said, "Hey, James is out." And so, so once again, I didn't have a partner for this up until maybe three. No, maybe. Three, yeah, two, three weeks ago yeah. as well. So there was a couple players that opened up at the last minute that could have been in- interesting. Okay, uh, we have Colin and Matt. Yeah. So Colin and Matt. Travis, is- Rettmeyer, and Zane. 
I like that team actually. Christian Alshon and Thomas Wilson. That's that's gonna be tough. If they can if they can mesh. Is this their first time? It seems like this is their first tournament. I think it is, yeah. Okay. Wyatt Stone, Todd Fote. Yeah. Pablo Federico. That's I mean they're they're definitely the favorites. Um, you and Connor Garnett. I'm with Connor Garnett. I actually like that. Yeah. And then you would play Jack Sock again. Yep. Second round. And yep. Julian Arnold. So <laughs> Connor Garnett would play Sock in singles, mm-hmm. and you'd play Sock in mixed and in men's. Yep. Um, DJ and Deckel Bar. Yeah. That's. Dude, was some- Tyson not playing this initially, or was this because of his illness? So so that's the thing. Because the one thing we didn't mention in women's is Megan and Etta are also not playing. Gotcha. So I don't know if they weren't playing previous Mm -hmm. or if he pulled out because of his foot or whatever. His illness, my bad. I I honestly don't know. (laughs) I don't think they were planning on playing it at all. Okay. Uh, Rafa and Marshall Brown. Rafa Hewitt and Marshall Brown. Another black bear. They'll play into Hayden and Callen. Yeah, that's interesting. So I'm going to say you and Connor Garnett go deep. I'm going to say you guys go. It's about time. I'm going to say you guys play Fed and. Would you play Fed and Pablo? That would be yeah. our next round, yeah. You so. play Fed and I'm going to say you guys beat. I'm going to say you and Connor go to the freaking semis. I'm not complaining, but I've had some tough draws lately. I'm going to say you go semis. Yeah. Um, that would be great. Would love it. And then on the other side of it, I don't think Colin and I don't. I think Colin and Matt actually get upset. I'm going to say who? all Sean and Thomas. They won't Com- get upset until the semis. semis. Yeah. So I'm going to say that my finals are Christian Alshon, Thomas Wilson versus Tyler Lung and Connor Garnett. If you lose first round, bro, I am first round. Like your, your first match. Okay. You got to get through sock and Julian too. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And then you got to get through fed and Pablo. Yeah. And then you have to get through <laughs> probably that bottom half of the bracket actually is wide open. That's actually much easier. Yeah. I mean, dude, the bottom half. No, I am in the bottom half. No, I, the bottom half of the, the bottom half. The bottom half of the bottom half. Okay. Like like down there with yes. Hayden and Callan, yeah. Rafa and Marshall, yeah. Deckel and DJ and Anik Lohani. Like that's that's much, much easier than Jack and Julian, you and Connor Garnett. Mm-hmm. Who's that other team? Oh, Eric Roddy. Yeah. But and then Pablo and Fed. Like, that's crazy. So that means that you're gonna have in the in the semis, mm-hmm. you're going to have like a Deckel and a DJ or a Hayden and a Callan mm-hmm. or even Rafa and Marsh. Well, probably not, but anyways. Okay. So that's my prediction. Not, like I said, this is your chance. This is the chance for everybody. Like everyone should be. Familiar. There's a couple of these tournaments that are a little bit smaller. I guess that some players will be taken off. I think this one, uh, Minnesota, maybe Austin, um, there's a yeah. couple of these other smaller ones that yeah. a lot of the top names aren't going to. And so I think that, like you said, will open it up for a lot of the uh, players that haven't been winning and also maybe a lot of the new players that are trying to break through. So it'll be, th- those should be fun tournaments. Yeah. Okay. Any other um, thoughts on Minnesota? No, no. I mean, I think it's exciting. I, like I said, this is, your, this is the chance for – things to be switched up a little bit and for us to see some new people take the podium. So it'll be fun. It'll be fun to see these new partnerships, these, all these new matchups. Okay. Our last segment is questions and that is brought to you by reset reset pickleball or dot, sorry, reset pickleball dot shop. Yep. Paddle reset. Yes. Is what they say. Yes. Um, this stuff is incredible. It's a spray that you spray on your paddles that cleans it. It's safe, effective. And what's the word, Jimmy? Oh my gosh, you're cleaning that. Um, What's the word? Coagulate? No, we don't use coagulate. Coagula- saw, somebody reached Coagulates? out to me and laughed at me. And I was like, look how good that word. <laughs> okay, the word they use is it emulsifies. It emulsifies, which means Tyler. It lifts up the gunk, the garbage that is left from the residue of this ball um, from the elements outside. And it makes that paddle a lot cleaner. It makes it have its grit back. Yeah, that was good. Um, and it's awesome. Use it. Use our code, KOTC at reset pickleball dot Dude, that smells good too it smells incredible it's like, it's like breeze for your i paddle. was just about to say you that. were yeah yeah okay thank you for your support go check them yeah. out reset they are a mom and pop shop they're not big pickle or big business or anything like that um we so love big pickle every 
<laughs> Every order ma- matters. All right. Yes. Thanks, guys. All right. All right moving on to questions. Yeah, are you ready? Model? I'm always ready. Some of these questions are rough. Okay. All right. We don't have that many, so we'll get through most of them. Somebody, somebody said, where is AJ? Restraining order? Question mark. I heard AJ's taking six weeks off. Wow. He's taking six weeks off. He's just... He gets paid and then he goes off. <laughs> yeah. I heard he's just chilling. He's just kind of focusing on his game, trying to get back after it. And he will be back in, I think in April, it's like four tournaments in a row. Uh-huh. And then if MLP starts, like we're going like... You guys from April to May are going hard. Yeah. And so I think AJ is kind of just ramping up for that and taking some time off. How can new players break into MLP if you have to be a contracted player to be drafted? So that's actually a really good question, but I was told that they're coming up with a system. Mm -hmm. In essence, what will happen is if you are not signed with MLP or PPA, they will allow you to be drafted, but then there's a minimum salary or minimum appearance fee Mm -hmm. that those players will receive. Mm -hmm. So they won't receive these three-year contracts. But that will allow you to break in. So if a kid like a Case and Campbell, for mm-hmm. example, who's not signed with anybody, right? Um, or a- Augie Ge. Ge? Ga? Gi? Ga? I don't know. Don't call me racist. Augie, who's not signed with anyone, mm-hmm. they can be drafted or selected or picked up on a waiver wire, and then they'll just receive a minimum fee mm-hmm. to play. Gotcha. Which is new because originally that wasn't the case. So I think that, that that's what they're working out. Whatever that fee is, it's going to be an appearance fee, 1000 1500 whatever it is. Okay. And they can play. We still want to know if Dylan got that date. Do you know if he asked that There's person no out? There's no way he did. He's too worried about his contract. He's okay. playing. Dude, he's, sorry, he's, not, he's not playing. Yeah. They're freaking – the Johnsons are playing APP Sacramento. Yeah. Like that – Supposedly – yeah, we got to figure that out. Yeah. Hasn't happened yet, so we, we got to figure that out. Let's get these boys signed. Okay. Um, what drills has Tyler been doing? Yeah, Tyler. What drills have I been doing, Jimmy? I don't. I don't know. I'm not there. You're That's not there. I. So I've been working a lot on my speed ups, being a lot more aggressive. I want to be very more, no, not very more, just a lot more aggressive yeah. in my game. I want to be the alpha of the lefties. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So a lot of speed ups, um, especially my backhand. I feel like my forehand has always had quite a bit of power, uh, but my backhand has lacked power, um, especially off the bounce. And so I've been working on that, a little two-hand speed up. Nice. And then also from the back, um, like mid-court swinging volleys with my backhand. Hmm. No question, just Tyra's (laughs) – never mind. What? That was it. No question, just Tyra's B-Day post, hard eyes, hard eyes. I mean, Tyra did one heck of a photo shoot for her birthday. Happy birthday, Tyra. We love Tyra. Tyra, Actually, honestly, oh, never mind. It was North Carolina that I played with her in. Tyra and I have become very good friends. Love Tyra to death. Happy birthday. I think she's 21 now. No, I think she's like 23. She's still so young. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's great. Her. I didn't know that doing a photo shoot for yourself for your birthday was a thing. Oh, we now, still need to recreate I'm, a picture. Yeah, we definitely need Do you to know recreate. which one I'm talking about? Yeah, 100%, which one? The red panties. <laughs> but I didn't know that was a thing. Like I this shows how old and out of touch I am. But I thought it was awesome. So happy birthday, Hurricane Tyra. Did you see Jilly B got a new sponsor? Oh my gosh, dude. My problem with I good for Jilly B getting a sponsor. Uh, I don't know where they're going to see her actually wear those clothes because she's not playing in any events, but and she's never going to be on center court. But with that being said, the weird thing about that is she said, give me 400 likes and I'll post it. The outtakes and the bloopers. Mm -hmm. Those looked like the bloopers. (laughs) I thought that she was posting the bloopers, like making fun of herself. Mm -hmm. I didn't know those were the real pictures. Those are the real ones. Bro. That, like fire that photographer for putting her in those poses. Like that's crazy. Oh, that was rough. Okay. Uh, somebody said, where will Jack sock go in the next MLP draft? What rank? He's going to go second, second round. 
Second overall. Second overall, yeah. really? Three year deal? Hundred percent. You, it's all upside. Over Ben Johns, over Anna Lee, Ben will over go one. JW, yeah, Ben will go one. Jack will go two. Really? J Dub doesn't even have a deal. But they can still play, right? You don't need you don't need a deal to play. I know, but why would J Dub play if he's not going to get paid? Why would you pay your own entry fees, pay your own travel, pay all these things when there's no prize money? Sponsors to continue with your progression. Then he can in your go game? do that in APP. But even I would still I still think Jack Sock gets taken over Jada. Over Anna Lee? Yeah. Over dude, Catherine? Yeah, dude. Look at how much he moves the needle too. Look at the view. We saw those viewing hours when Jack plays. Yeah. So if you're a team and you can market that for three years, yeah. You take Ben one, mm-hmm. clear cut. And then I think you I think Jack goes too. Wow. Okay. Other By the than- way, Jilly B got her four hundred likes. <laughs> so Uh-oh. we get so we get to see the uh, outtakes. Are you pumped about that? I'm stoked. I can't wait to see them. Somebody said, other than Jilly B, which players were bought out? Um, we don't want to go through all of them, but as we said in the beginning, most of them were at the challenger level or just kind of breaking into the challenger level. There was one uh, that Jimmy alluded to that was in the premier level. Yeah, I mean they're all look. They're most of the. APP players that were playing APPs anyways. What did you find improved your pickleball game that people don't really talk about? Five, five minute mile. Five minute mile. Jump rope. Jump roping is big. I know that you're big on jump roping. Yep. That's big. I think that doing thing cross training is big. Okay. I think that obviously don't look at me, but I would say <laughs> Spoken. From, from the professional level cross training is big and things away from pickleball. Like it, look at all the pros right now that are having success. If you're following them on Instagram, look at fed and Pablo Anna bright, uh, Catherine. I mean, even we can even look at Tyson, even though it's all for show, Mm -hmm. but they're all doing like intense cross training workouts. Shelby Bates has been freaking working her butt off. Hannah Blatt. Like they do, they're doing intense cross training workouts that I think are helping them get better. At pickleball. What do you mean by cross training? Like different sports? Or they're just doing like, weights. They're uh, doing speed training. They're okay. doing, yeah, jump rope. They're doing ladders. They're doing like they're doing circuit training, mm-hmm. right? Everybody's taking care of their bodies now. I mean, freaking cold plunges and saunas. Yeah. And, I mean, Rafa, same thing. So I think that those types of things, like you don't realize it, but those will help you. They're gonna help your. They're gonna help you be faster on the court, right? Mm-hmm. They're gonna help your you know, your speed of your shots, they're going to help you move better. I mean, all those yeah. things, like it doesn't, you don't have to be on the court yeah. per se to get better at pickleball. Going off of that, I mean, you can literally study film, watch gameplay. Yeah. And I think shot selection is really big. I mean, at the highest level, I think most of the players, they have the shots, they have the skills, they have the talent. It's the shot selection, when to go for a certain shot, where to hit, how to yeah. pull this person off the court to open up the court. Um, it's almost like chess. And so um, there's a lot of different things you can do. Obviously, the yeah. physical fitness, the cross training is going to be huge. But I, I like to think of strategy a little bit more. Um, yeah. So obviously, scouting and film is huge. Okay. Like, uh, somebody said, when will the first first event happen? Will they force it for late March or early April? From what we've been told, they're trying for late May. Uh, somebody said, where has Hannah Johns been? Hannah Johns, where have you been? I don't know. I, so she's still with PPA. She's still working there, but she just isn't traveling nearly as much. She's yeah. doing a lot more writing, a lot more tech stuff, copy, yeah, copyright. Yeah, she's, she's, I can't remember her exact role, but she's doing some stuff for pickleball.com. Um, and I think that she will be at some events, but she's just not going to go to 30 events a year. Anymore. Yeah. I mean, it takes, it takes a toll. Yeah. It takes a massive toll on everybody, the players, the employees, the yep. fans, um, when there's, X amount of tournaments. Yeah, exactly. Uh, somebody said, what steps do you think colleges should take to help make pickle a college sport? So I think that you, I mean, one, they've got to get it. It's got to become sanctioned. So that's obviously reaching out to the NCAA and having it become an officially sanctioned sport, which hopefully is already been done or is in the works or being talked about. Uh, and then the other thing is, is colleges have got to promote it on campus, right? Because yeah. all these sports start out as club sports or yeah. intramural sports. Mm-hmm. Right. If you have a massive intramural, like, so BYU obviously is close to us. Mm-hmm. 
BYU has a massive intramural program. Mm -hmm. And they do intramural. Their intramural basketball is, I don't think people understand, it's huge. It's very competitive. Very competitive. <laughs> and their flag football. And their flag football. Yeah. It's it's huge. I mean, we're talking hundreds of teams. Yeah. It's very, you get insane athletes in mm -hmm. there, right? And so, you know, pickleball has got to become that same way mm -hmm. where you, where it grows organically within the colleges and then it, you have a chance. Okay. I don't know if you saw this, but somebody said, why didn't Julian get a penalty for stomping on the ball? So in his match against Matt and James, he stomped on the ball and smashed it. Yeah. And he did not get a penalty. Do you know why? Or no, is there, on that? was it, was he doing it like out of anger, frustration? Well, I mean, it, did it's he think tricky. the ball was out around. I don't know. I mean, so I think they were changing sides. Yeah. And he like got the ball and he stepped on it. Oh. And so it's kind of tricky to say. I mean, you'll see a lot of players do this with their paddle. They'll throw it down on the ground and they'll call a timeout. Yeah. And so if they weren't calling a timeout, then that would just be them throwing the paddle on the ground. Yeah. But since they're calling a timeout, it's as if they're, which I don't know if I necessarily agree with, but a lot of players will get away with that type of stuff. Yeah, I uh, I didn't I actually didn't see that, but mm -hmm. I mean, what would the what's the penalty? Just ball abuse, or I don't know, ball, abuse? <laughs> ball abuse. Yeah, is that a thing? In tennis, it is. Oh, really? Yeah. We need a referee. Is there a referee watching? <laughs> is ball abuse a penalty in pickleball? I mean, if you grab the ball and huck it into the hit it into the stands, I'd I'd imagine they do something. Yeah, that's true. Come on now. I didn't know. I mean, I didn't know it was called ball abuse though. All right, let's see. Um, why does the PPA have so many problems keeping the scoreboard correct? Uh, I just think they have to feed the hamsters, and they're not doing that. No, I really <laughs> think that there's – I don't know. Like, I, I think it because it's being done from a truck, and they're not sitting on the court. Mm -hmm. And so it's probably difficult to – because you don't have announcers. You can't really hear anything. Mm -hmm. And so you're trying to keep track by essentially watching – a silent match. Yep. And so if you're not watching every second of every point and you can't hear the referees, mm -hmm. I think that they just struggle to kind of keep it up. To yeah. And I that. think, I mean, that's understandable, but where this actually becomes a legitimate issue is when gambling is yeah. legalized, because as we saw, I think we talked about yeah. this last time, but somebody went, supposedly somebody went to a betting place to put odds against somebody else because they were down yeah. and they lost, like 500 bucks or something yeah, like that because the scoreboard, uh, because was, the scoreboard was, was flipped. Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, yeah. And I don't know. Yeah. I don't so. know, but yeah, they, they've got a lot to figure out still when it comes to. So that. real quick, we're just going to end with this. This isn't really a question, but well, kind of is. What are your thoughts on the service rule? So the first tournament, the masters, they were, extremely by the way, you cannot jump into the, you have to have one foot on the court when you serve. Yes. So my yeah. flying, MJ through the air. How did Anna Lee? Wasn't she jumping? She's running. And so actually when she actually hit the ball, she did have a foot on the ground. Okay. I thought that she had jumped. But... Yeah, no. So okay. so you have to have one foot on the ground. I got clarification on that. Thank you to the referees. What so if you have, have like really, really uh, long legs and just have one like back there? You just stretch. Yeah, just stretch yeah, it. I know. Okay. Um, so the first tournament, PPA kind of switched up the rules on the serve. They're trying to reduce the amount that it's affecting the gameplay. Yeah. Um, the first tournament, Palm Springs, super, super strict. They were calling yeah. everything. Yeah. And then after that tournament, it's basically back to zero. No, Nobody's been called. Maybe one person. Do you think that they haven't been called because they've adjusted? Or do you think they haven't been called because... They're, they're not following through. The they're not following are. through. Somebody just sent me this screenshot of Tyson McGuffin okay. at um, the last tournament. And he is okay. clearly, clearly, clearly violating the rule. Okay. So right there... Oh yeah, can we get this posted? Yeah. So right there. Yeah. Number one, palms not down. Yeah. And number two, it's way above. Like yeah, this I mean, guy he's just dropping said, it from his chest, yeah. almost chest high. I mean, he's bent over, but it's almost chest high. Yeah. And so, do refs need to be more strict, or what do they need to do about the serve? Or just do? I think it's hard as up? a referee because the reality is, is that's new for them too. So they're still getting used to that rule too. Yeah. <clears throat> and so I think it's hard for them. And also, I'm not saying that the refs have ever been compromised in any way, shape, or form. Big Pickle actually, hasn't gotten to them? No, I think we actually have amazing referees in pickleball. Mm -hmm. And I, and honestly, I... Do you think that? I, I thought you used to bash refs. Never. I'm not freaking whatever her name is. <laughs> I love the refs. I actually think we have really good refs in pickleball. The problem is, is I think that it's new for them, number one. Number two, 
refs don't like is contrary to popular belief. They actually don't want you to know their names. Mm -hmm. They don't want you to like, like be like, Oh, we got this guy again. Like yeah. the NBA referees. It's like, Oh my gosh, Scott Foster again, who actually plays pickleball. Mm -hmm. They're like, Oh gosh, Scott Foster. And there's like stats that people will pull up on certain referees. And it's like, yeah. you know, Chris Paul is 0 and 38 when Tony brothers is his referee in a match, you know, mm -hmm. things like that. And people don't want that for pickleball and that the refs don't want that. And so I think that sometimes we like, they're trying to not uh, control the outcome of a match or mm -hmm. have any say in the outcome of a match the best way possible. They're going to call the rules the best that they can. Mm -hmm. But if a ref is not a hundred percent sure that Tyson McGuffin serve is yeah. illegal, they're not going to call it. Yeah. And I don't think that they should, to be honest with you, but if they see it, Yes, they're going to call it. I mean, we have freaking Alan Roman, who is like, when he called Leia, mm -hmm. you know, for, for that foot fault, he yeah. was like, I don't care the score. I don't care the situation. If it's a fault, it's a fault, which it was questionable that it was even a fault to mm -hmm. begin with. But I just think that the refs, it's new for them too, and they're trying to not dictate the outcome of a match in any way possible, you know, so it's tough. I mean, I think it's a really thankless job. And how much, I mean, how much do you think refs make? It's not much, but. Are they it, paying their own way to be there too? I I would imagine they get a stipend. I, I would mean, imagine they come out on top. Yeah. I mean, but like, not by much, dude. You're not getting rich being a freaking PPA referee. No, but I mean, how many jobs are you getting rich doing it? I know, but I'm just saying you know. that it's kind of a thankless yeah. No, the refs are good. And I think their pay has increased quite a bit. Like if you and I think ever it will continue to increase, like if you ever, like as a referee, most of the time, right. If you know a referee's name, it's because of something negative. Yeah. Most of the time. Yeah. Like yeah. you're never like, man, what a great call Yeah, that, you know, Onisha made today. Like, I don't Onisha, know you probably don't, don't follow tennis too much, but apparently, uh, what's his name? Oh my gosh, I just forgot his name, but he was playing in a tournament and he got disqualified because there was a actual person, a ref, that made a bad lines call and he was um, getting mad at the person. Yeah. And what the commentators or the public was saying is that there needs to be automated line calls so this never happens. So, I mean, they're almost at that, like Major League Baseball is yeah. going with, you know, robots for, you know, umpiring mm -hmm. and calling balls and strikes. Yeah. And it's crazy. Like we're taking the human element out of everything. Exactly. And I don't know if, I mean, I get it. You're getting the right call. But when you take that human element out of it. It's hard. It'll be interesting. Yeah. I don't think they could ever do that for basketball or football. No, no. There's too many. It's, and it's too many of a judgment call. Because like, yeah. like they say in football, right? There's holding on every single play. Exactly. So if somehow they had some AI system that could like determine when someone's being held, it would be like every single play would be a freaking. Yeah. Would be a flag. They do the first AI in every every yeah. single every play snap. It's just like <laughs> flags everywhere. Just yeah. <laughs> so you couldn't do that. But I mean, I think when it comes to line calls, obviously yeah. you you probably could. But I also. Think but I mean, for example, if John McEnroe, yeah. if there were automated line calls, you would never see his outburst. He would never be famous no. for exploding. No, yeah, exactly. But I also mean, it takes away the personality. But also, like you still need referees and pickleball for like like the serves, right? Things like that. Or, or I mean, AI should be able to solve that. Okay. Well, what about if there's a hindrance where somebody, you know, might yell something? Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's still, there's still rules that things that need interpretation. Yeah. So anyways. Gotcha. Anything thanks. else, Jimmy? No. Um, Minnesota we, though. I'm pumped up to watch it. I'm excited. Okay. We got um, some snow here in Utah. Dude, we got, yeah, we got freaking. Yeah. I mean, it's supposed to be spring. Yeah. Um, big thanks to our uh, sponsors. Pickler. Yes. Pickleball Central, yes. Vulcan Pickleball, CND Pickleball Nets, and Reset Spray. Pickleball spray Paddle Reset Cleaner. Yeah. Um, thank you for sponsoring. Play hard, the show. play clean. That's a kind of a good. I like that slogan. No, it's great. Great product. We, play hard, play clean. We like it. Um, if you have made it thus far, please do us a big favor. Hit that like and subscribe yeah. button. Share this video with your friends. Yes. And we will see you guys next time. Yes. Also, go check out our Discord. Five hundred members and growing. Let's We're go. Gonna, we should be doing a sweet giveaway soon. We're gonna do a giveaway, yeah, for the Discord. So go check it out.